Yeah, is it one of those where uh, when they bring a lot, is it all is it communication kind of thing? What's the process of? We communicate everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we slide to the back, sometimes we don't. You know, it's based on. I'm not going to give away all the secrets what we do. <laughs> right, right, but, right, right. You know, our job is to protect the quarterback, and we got five guys. And sometimes the running backs in, sometimes it's not. So it could be five, it could be six, it could be seven. William just said you, you thought the Panther looked pretty good on Saturday. Obviously, the I thought the play game. action pass game was uh, pretty good. You know, uh, we're constantly striving for perfection, so there's always things you can get better at. And that's the name of the game, right? How did those guys, they haven't given up a lot of sacks over the years. How did they kind of take Saturday, you know, kind of the way that went? How did they evaluate? Oh, some it? sacks are on them, some aren't, you know. I mean, every time there's a sack, it's not always on the whole line. you got to remember that. Do they do things in Missouri I'm talking about to, to kind of deceptive up front, or is it pretty much just oh, I mean, trying to beat they've you? They've got an NFL defensive coordinator, so I'm sure he's got a lot of stuff up his sleeve, you know, that he's been holding for this game. And, uh, you know, he's the coordinator at the Browns, coordinator at the Arizona Cardinals. So they got, they got. I'm sure they got plenty of uh, blitz schemes and protection is ways to create protection issues in the arsenal. When the opponent has nine sacks in the previous week, does that get your guys' attention pretty fast? I mean, at the end of the day, our job is to protect the quarterback. So whether they had zero or nine, uh, you you have to protect the quarterback in this league. Uh, in the National Football League, those guys make 20 plus million dollars. So there's a premium on protecting the quarterback. What do you think of how Eli showed up in his first year? Kind of. You know, I thought he did some decent things. I think there's some things he'd like to have back and improve on. Uh, but you know, he's a guy that works hard and he'll constantly strive to improve. And see him out here working after practice to get extra work in because of the limited time we had to practice to work on some things. And that's just the kind of guy he is. It's important to him. What's your biggest concern? What keeps you up at night? I mean, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, you have to, as, a, as an O-line coach in this league, uh, realize that there's a lot of great football coaches in this league, a lot of guys that have had a lot of experience in different places, and they can throw anything at you. You know, you look at the game last week, Louisiana Monroe tried everything they could. They brought all kinds of different pressures and things that, you know, they were in five different fronts, you know, so you have to know how to block all those against every play we have. So it, it, they can present a challenge, but that's why it goes back to your, your coaching, uh, your day one install, your day two, your day three, the rules that you have on every play. Everyone has rules, uh, what we're doing as far as offensively, what play we're running. And you have to execute those rules when people are throwing a lot at you. How do you think Derek played? Uh, I think he did decent for his first game. He has got to continue to work on his power level and do those things. But, uh, you know, he he knew after Monday, we, after our meeting, what my expectations are, and I expect a, a lot more of him. And I think we can still continue to work, talk about and work on playing lower, playing with better power level on a consistent basis, finishing blocks. And those are things that usually show up in the first game. You usually talk about pad level a lot after the first game. It doesn't matter how much you talk about it prior. That's usually what shows up. Yeah, generally speaking, how was the footwork of the guys? I mean, we were way up there. I didn't see too many people stepping on people's feet. Actually. No, I thought we were pretty decent there as far as footwork. I like to see us do a little bit better job on redirection, you know, uh, playing with more violent hands at times, you know, those types of things. But, uh, you know, it was day one, you know, game one. And, uh, your biggest improvement usually shows up between game game one and game two. Number 18 from Missouri. Uh, he's hit some in this pass rush. Uh, Aaron Rose Falcon gave him. He has to deal with him. I'm sorry? <laughs> uh, number 18 from Missouri. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be a tremendous pass rush. He's from South Carolina. We had him in camp when I coached in South Carolina, so I know him very well. Uh, Obviously, I played against the guys of South Carolina, so um, you know he's a good football player. And, you know, they're they're all they're all pretty good up front. Speaking of Pam, though, Darren's going to block him. I'm sorry. Speaking of Pam, though, Darren's going to block him. Ah, Darian Kennard. He'll be matched up on Kennard every play. Yep. Liam talked a little bit about things the running backs can do to to pick up some hidden yardage that you may have left on on the field Saturday. What are some things the line can do too in, in the run game? I mean, I think we have to consistently have power level, create a new line of scrimmage, make sure we're targeted on the right people, understand the concepts of what we're doing play-wise. You know, every play has a different concept of what we're doing and what we expect the defense to do as far as the behavior and reaction to what we're doing. 
and just thoroughly understand that. And then <laughs> during the course of the game, saying, hey, you know, they're, they're not doing this here, what we expected. They're reacting like this. This is what we need to do here. That's part of the gamesmanship and the game of football. Yeah. O linemen have been traditionally known to be the smartest people on the team. So that's got to be an advantage. Do you see that with this team? Well, I, I hope it continues to be that way. Uh, with, you know, Luke's obviously a tremendous leader up front for us. He makes all the calls, he gets us in the right spots. And now we just got to do a good job of communicating to each other and to the tight ends when they're involved in the blocking scheme and making sure everyone's on the same page.